Hello 3D printing friends! Bamboo Lab just released something new. It's the brand new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, and today I'm super excited to be able to show it to you. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so today we're looking at the new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and its companion, the AMS Lite. Big thanks to Bamboo Lab for sending this over so I could run some filament through it and show it to you. We'll talk about the printer's specs and features, see what it's like to use it, look at some prints, and go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, and watch to the end to see some really cool extras from Bamboo Lab too. Will this be the new bamboo for you? Comment and let me know. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so Bamboo Lab started teasing colorful printing for everyone on social media a couple of weeks ago. There was a lot of speculation about what that could be. A lot of speculation. Some of it was pretty creative, too. But it's become clear that what they meant by that was this is probably the least expensive multi-material FDM 3D printer on the market. In other words, they're trying to make multicolor and multi-material printing as affordable as possible. And so, let's talk about pricing. The Bamboo Lab A1 Mini will sell for just $299 US. And the multi-material add-on, the AMS Lite, will sell for $249. And the A1 Mini Combo, that's the A1 Mini with the AMS Lite, will sell for only $459, which is about $90 less than buying them separately. Well, now let's talk about availability. Bamboo Lab is only going to be selling the Combo to start with, so you'll have to wait if you just want to get the A1 Mini on its own. Bamboo Lab said that due to material shortages, they're gonna do at least two rounds of pre-orders while they build up stock. And they're doing that so they don't have a bunch of people waiting forever for an order to ship. Now, hopefully they'll have enough stock to open up regular orders after two or three rounds of pre-orders. So when you do finally get your A1 Mini Combo, what do you get? Well, in the box, you'll find the fully assembled A1 Mini and the sum assembly required AMS Lite. There's a little quick start guide which covers the assembly and setup. So just follow those instructions to get everything connected and set up. Really, the only thing to do to the A1 Mini is attach the spool holder, if you want it, and then to the end of the X-axis arm, attach the purge wiper, or as I call it, the squiggle shooter. Now, it wouldn't be a Bamboo Lab printer if it didn't poop, right? This little device perfectly pops the poop purges to the printer's periphery, projected precisely into a plastic repository you provide. To assemble the AMS Lite, Bolt the base on, and then snap the four spool holder hubs on, and connect the four Bowden tubes between the AMS Lite and the A1 Mini. Now you also get a small set of tools and some spare parts. Okay, now let's talk about the A1 Mini's specs and features. It's a small cantilever style FDM 3D printer with a 180 by 180 by 180 millimeter build volume. It has an all metal hot end with a 0.4 millimeter stainless steel nozzle, and that nozzle can get up to 300 degrees Celsius. The tool head has four filament inputs, but it's not a color mixing tool head. There's only room for one filament going into the hot end. It's like the Highlander. There can be only one. It has a maximum speed of 500 millimeters per second and a maximum acceleration of 10,000 millimeters per second squared. So its acceleration is half that of the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1 series. The printer comes with two different magnetic spring steel build plates. One is a double-sided textured PEI surface, and the other is a double-sided smooth PEI surface. So you can choose whether you want a textured look or a smooth look on the part of your prints that's on the bed. Interestingly, the bed has a maximum temperature of only 80 degrees Celsius, but that's probably because, according to the spec sheet, it's intended to print PLA, PETG, TPU, and PVA, which is a water-soluble support material. So that's about all it needs for those. The A1 Mini also has a print monitoring camera, so you can see what the printer is doing with the Bamboo Studio Slicer or with the Bamboo Handy mobile app. Now the camera has a wide field of view, but it's a low data rate camera like the P1 series has. So when the printer is in motion, the image isn't the clearest. It can record time lapses, but these are best done when using the smooth time lapse setting in the Bamboo Studio Slicer, rather than the traditional kind where it just snaps a frame at each layer change. There's also a power loss recovery feature and a suite of filament sensors. There's a filament runout sensor, a filament odometry sensor, and a filament tangle sensor. 
The A1 Mini also has a 2.4 inch touchscreen, Wi-Fi connectivity, a micro SD card slot for storage, and a pair of four pin bamboo bus connectors. But there are two more awesome features, active noise cancellation on the motors and easy tool free, connector free, hot end and nozzle swaps. I really wanna show you those right now and then we'll move on to the AMS Lite. The first feature I wanna highlight is the tool free, connector free, hot end and nozzle swaps. Now this one really blew me away. Let me show you how ridiculously easy this is to do. With the printer's hot bits at room temperature, press the filament cutting lever to make sure the filament has been cut off. Remove the front cover of the tool head, unsnap it from the bottom, and then lift it up and off. Remove the silicone sock from the hot end, pull it forward and then down to get it clear of the nozzle. Unclip the hot end, pull the hot end out and down. Then, to replace it, put the new hot end in and clip it in place. Then, put the silicone sock back on and snap the front cover back on. That's literally it. It takes under a minute to do. So, the other feature I want to highlight is the active noise cancellation. During the initial setup of the printer, the active noise cancellation feature listens to the motors as they move and cancels the noise they make. I don't think there's an actual microphone embedded in the machine. I think it's just using the same accelerometers it uses to calibrate the vibration compensation that helps prevent ringing artifacts on prints. So it runs the motors at different speeds and then shows you on the screen as it runs the motors without and then with the noise cancellation. I can really hear the difference. At certain speeds, the motors are freakishly quiet. If you want to experience the whole seven minute calibration, I've got a video with that raw footage linked in the description. And here's a piece of good news for owners of other Bamboo Lab printers. Bamboo Lab will be rolling this feature out to all existing X1 and P1 series printers via a firmware update. I don't know exactly when that's happening, but I've been told that it is coming. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful or informative, a subscribe would mean a lot to me. That lets me know that with all the work that goes into these videos, I'm making useful content that you enjoy. Okay, now let's look at the AMS Lite. The AMS Lite holds four spools. Where the standard AMS is picky about spool width and outside diameter, the Lite is more tolerant. So spools that might have had a hard time with the full-size AMS fit just fine on the AMS Lite. I can use cardboard spools from Protopasta and Polymaker, and I can use these little 250 gram spools. Each motor unit on the AMS Lite feeds from below, which sounds like it could be a pain in the butt to load, but it's really not. There's a wide funnel at the bottom to take in the filament, and the feeder's release button is easy to press. Once you get the filament a little way into the feeder, the motor takes over and pulls it into the tube. On that initial loading, it doesn't move the filament all the way to the tool head, it stops at the Bon Jovi point, you know, halfway there. And when you load filament, the AMS light very quickly determines if the spool has a Bamboo Lab RFID tag on it. And like I've said in other videos, don't let the RFID concept scare you off. You can use 1.75 millimeter PLA, PETG, TPU, or PVA filament from any manufacturer as long as the spools physically fit on the unit. The benefit of using filament from Bamboo Lab is that it saves you the trouble of telling the printer or the Bamboo Studio Slicer software what kind of filament you loaded and what color it is. When I load this spool of orange Bamboo Lab PLA, the AMS light reads the RFID tag and then the printer says, oh, that's orange PLA. And inserting the filament into the AMS was literally all I had to do. It's super convenient. So what's it like using the A1 Mini? Well, every print starts with a quick tune played on the motors, a vibration calibration and bed leveling, and a purge. And the prints end with a little tune too. Now don't worry, you can turn the tunes off. I guess that would be tuning them out. But personally, I think it's cute. And Bamboo Lab has hinted they might have a web app that'll let you make your own. But before any of that, printing generally starts with slicing the models you want to print using the Bamboo Studio Slicer software. Once sliced, you can send it to the printer right from Bamboo Studio via the Bamboo Lab Cloud service, or by using the printer in LAN only mode, where it's on the same network as the computer running Bamboo Studio, but it's not talking to the cloud service. Or use the printer the traditional way by saving the sliced files to a micro SD card, 
putting the card in the printer, and starting to print from the screen. Now, the screen on the printer is nice. It's small, but it's nice. Most of the time, it shows you a little thumbnail of the model that's printing. Not always, though, and I don't know why that happens. But it does keep you updated on the progress of the print, and you can adjust the nozzle or bed temperature from the screen, as well as pause or completely cancel the print job. And just like its larger siblings, you can switch the printing speed from standard and pick silent, which is half speed, or sport, which is 140% speed, or ludicrous mode, which is 166% speed. If you have the printer connected to a Wi-Fi network and you're letting it communicate with the cloud service, you can use Bamboo Studio or the Bamboo Handy mobile app to monitor the printer's camera to see what it's doing and stop or pause the print if you see something going wrong. The printer uses the same kind of low data rate camera that the Bamboo Lab P1 printers use, so the live video feed can look a little more like a slideshow than an actual video. And if you're planning on recording time-lapse videos, you're probably going to want to use smooth time lapses where the printer parks the head and the bed before taking a snapshot instead of traditional time lapses where the printer takes a snapshot when it's changing layers while everything is still in motion. Here's a traditional time lapse and a smooth time lapse side by side. The traditional time lapses on the A1 Mini tend to look all wibbly wobbly, but the smooth ones are, well, smooth. One other thing to be aware of is that the camera on the A1 Mini has a really wide field of view. So you might want to rotate the printer so the background is something innocuous or prop something up like some foam core board to block its view of the world beyond. Well, now that you've seen some time lapses of prints, how about seeing some of the actual prints themselves? This is the Dragon Bust by Hino printed in Protopasta's partly cloudy blue HTPLA. This came out really glossy with nice clean layers, and the detail on it is really nice. There's a little roughness on the underside of the long horns sweeping back from the head, where they were in contact with the supports. But other than that, it's a really clean print. Next, here's a stack of two-color poker chips by Agat Biz. These are printed in the Bamboo Lab white and green PLA. I was able to get 11 of them on the build plate on the A1 Mini, and they took just under three hours to print. They look great, no flaws at all, and they make a satisfying click sound when you stack them. Now, here's the woven coaster set by James the Printer. I printed this in Printed Solid's Jesse filament, the tan 64 color. This is really nicely designed, and it's an easy print, too. The holder took about three and a half hours, and each pair of coasters was four hours. So this is just under 16 hours of print time for this set. And I love the look of these. The woven pattern gives the condensation from the side of a beverage someplace to go so it doesn't drip on you when you take a sip of your drink. Next up, a slightly different version of a model that I often print. This is a resculpt of Luby 3 ds Aria of the Dragon. This was printed with Bamboo Lab white and green PLA and Polymaker's Polyterra Charcoal PLA. This print took just under six hours to complete, and I love how it came out. Just a few little wisps of stringing between her wings and head, and it's a little rough on the overhangs on the end of her tail. Other than that, she turned out really good. This cute dancing fox figure is a multicolor remix done by Waikiki Prods on printables. It was printed in Bamboo Lab Orange and White PLA and Polyterra Charcoal Black. The model came out super smooth. The only problem I see with it is that it looks like some of the black filament got dragged along when the nose and the eyes were being printed. So there are a couple of marks on the top of the fox's head. Really clean model otherwise, and I like it. Now it's time for a 3D Benchy, designed by Creative Tools. This is one of the pre-sliced speedboat editions of the Benchy, which means it's sliced for the fastest possible printing. And this one, printed in Bamboo Lab Green PLA, printed in 17 minutes. You can see a couple of issues with it. The corner overhangs on the back of the wheelhouse roof are kind of curved up a little bit, and there are gaps between some of the walls, like on the box behind the wheelhouse. But for a 17-minute print of a model that used to take an hour and a half or more, it's pretty great. And the last print is the Herringbone Planetary Gear by Emmett Lalish. I printed this in the Bamboo Lab Green PLA as well, and I'm using this as kind of a speed comparison with the Bamboo Lab P1S that I showed a few weeks ago. 
The P1S printed this as a single color model in about an hour. And how long did the A1 Mini take to print the same model? About an hour. It was one hour and one minute. And like the one I printed on the P1S, the one I printed on the A1 Mini worked right off the build plate without any binding or any of the gears fused together. I just popped it off the build plate and it spun great the very first time. Okay, that's it for the prints. Now it's time to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. And let's start with the good. So, even though it's a bed slinger, it's fast. I only used one model for a speed comparison, but the A1 Mini printed the herringbone planetary gear just as quickly as the Bamboo Lab P1S, which prints just as quickly as the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Like the other printers Bamboo Lab makes, the vibration compensation lets you print at high speed without weird ringing artifacts on the prints. So the A1 Mini can provide the high speed and high quality prints that I've come to expect from my other Bamboo Lab printers. The active noise cancellation on the motors works well and helps make the printer quiet even when printing fast. The AMS light is able to handle spools the regular AMS can't, and it spends less time loading and unloading filament because it doesn't have to move it all the way back to the spool. I like the aesthetics of the A1 Mini, especially paired with the AMS light. I think it would look right at home in a science lab. And although the 180 by 180 by 180 millimeter build volume can be a bit of a limitation, that's still a 7 inch cube and a good number of models will fit in that volume. So now, the bad. Where the standard AMS unit can sit on top of an X1 or P1 series printer, the AMS light sits beside the A1 Mini. So while I like the look of the A1 Mini and the AMS light, between the two of them there's a bit of sprawl. Like all Bamboo Lab printers, the A1 Mini poops, so you'll need to provide your own waste bin for the printer's pretty plastic purges. I've just been using these little cardboard trays that come in some of the groceries that we get from Costco, and they generally catch it all. But I suspect you'll see a sudden rush of poop catchers on your favorite 3D model sites. The screen's a bit small, but it fits well with the overall design. And there are a couple of minor annoyances, at least to me. One is that the squiggle shooter buzzes during the vibration calibration at the start of every print. And the other is that the power cord is integrated into the back of the printer. I kind of wish it had a standard power socket so I could use a longer cord if I wanted to, instead of having to get an extension cord if I need the printer further from an outlet. Now it's time for the ugly. Honestly, there really isn't any ugly with the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, but if I had to pick one thing, it's got to be the filament waste when purging between colors on a multi-material print. Now, like I said in the P1S video, it's not specific to the AMS or Bamboo Lab printers. It's just a general problem with printing multiple colors on a single nozzle printer. When the printer has to purge out one material so the next one comes out clean, that can be a lot of wasted filament. But at the same time, the results can be really nice too. I wish there was an easy way to take all those little purge pellets and turn them back into filament at home. So at the beginning of the video, I told you there were some really cool extra things from Bamboo Lab. What are they? Well, to start, there are two extra special things that come in every box. I don't think any other printer manufacturer is doing anything like this. First, there's one of four project kits chosen at random. You can get a printable LED lamp, a wireless mouse, a motorized marble run, or a two-cylinder engine model. I got the lamp kit, and there are actually two different lamp shades that you can print for it, and this is the shade that appealed to me. It took about five and a half hours to print, and it came out super clean. The lamp plugs into USB for power, and it has an on-off switch in the middle of the cable. Next, you know Bamboo Lab sells their own filament, so the other special thing in the box is this a set of filament swatches, so you can get an idea of the colors and materials they have available. There are 80 swatches in the pack, and each has a five-digit code number laser etched on it. So when you found the perfect swatch for a project, you can type that number into the search bar on their store and go right to that filament to order it. There's even a swatch display board you can print. It holds 20 swatches, and the file is included on the printer's microSD card. I printed several of them so I can keep the different material types on their own cards. Okay, so now it's time to show you the specialist, most special, thing that Bamboo Lab sent, and that's this. In the interest of transparency, this is clearly an engineering prototype. Companies make these clear cases on their products to verify wire routing and make sure the internal components are fitting the way they expect. 
Now, as an Apple guy and vintage computer fan, I'm very familiar with Apple doing this, even as far back as the original Macintosh and the Newton handhelds. So getting something like this is very, very special to me, and it's just incredibly cool. Even the AMS light is done in a transparent plastic, so you can see all the internals. The big copper coils here are the RFID tag readers. And you can see the motors and all the gears on the filament feeders. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because this is really something that makes me smile, and I thought you might like to see it too. So that's the new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini Combo with the AMS light. Personally, I like it, but what about you? Is the A1 Mini or the A1 Mini Combo something you'd be interested in buying? Comment and let me know and tell me why you would or wouldn't get one. Links to the A1 Mini and to all the models that I printed are down in the description. Thanks again to Bamboo Lab for sending all this stuff over so I could show it to you. And a big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or by using the links in the description. And if you liked this video, I think it would be great if you subscribed. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. It's like the Highlander. There can be only one. It has a maximum... <laughs>